My name is Georgette Tadoul. I am Yael Tadoul mom. Uh, I'm born a long time ago <laughs> in Rabat, Maroc. first opened with the Zionism in Morocco, because I was aware about that. Moroccan Jews have such a pride for Zionists to be Zionist and have ideology of being, it was very strong to feel they were Zionist. And even like, I always think about the prayer of it, but uh, uh, next year, Shana Babi Yerushalayim was not just a sentence. It was, it was very vivid in the hearts of Moroccan Jews. When they said Shana Ba Yerushalayim, they meant it. They wanted, they knew that the place for Jewish people should be in Israel much before Israel had uh, its independence. And when, uh, in 1948, when Jews get the, uh, the Israeli get uh, the independence, so started a big emigration towards Israel. And Jews in Morocco, contrary to the um, Ashkenazi people that had uh, uh, the Holocaust and a lot of persecutions, Morocco, I can say uh, that Morocco was the least, there were persecutions here and there and sometimes, but it was the least uh, had the persecution from the Muslim side. So they were, I would say, pretty well. But uh, this being said, even though they always dream, dreamt of going to Israel, because they knew it was even not paper, so this is the ideal and the real Zionism. Even if they were okay, and they are our cousins, because we have the same, like, uh, many of the characteristics of the Muslims, even though they knew they had to go to Israel, without, without no persecution, because they are obliged to go, but by love for Eretz Israel. Uh, as we know, like the uh, Judaism in Morocco exists for many uh, centuries, even before Jesus Christ. It was the Berber Jews and a lot of other Jews, but I'm not going to get to it. But most, the big uh, 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 Jewish population came after the Inquisition in Spain. And I am a descendant of that. My parents, I think, uh, they, they maybe in the early 60s thought about going to Israel, but you know, things not easy. And at that time, they left, uh, they took risk because they, t they went to clandestinely. Yeah? Clandestinely. Clandestinely. Yeah. So they left, and it was not easy because, you know, you have a, you didn't say to anyone, and we have the, 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 the you, know, you know, people from the Suchnut that, you know, came and talked to us, and we accepted to go. And here we, you know, we prepared and went to Israel. The only bad thing that happened in my family, not to others, that my father was sick, and in the middle of the trip, my father died in Marseille because it was the place of the transition between Morocco, Marseille, France. Between uh, Morocco and Israel, we have to stop for a week or two, sometimes just a few days, but in our case, because our dad was dead, he, uh, so we stayed more than a month the time to, you know, to manage and, and bring the corpse, and etc. And uh, when we arrived to Israel, the, the Zionism was always here. We, we felt very Zionist and proud. Although we, uh, we, we, there are diff there were, we encountered difficulties uh, with the economy. It makes, I think it gives love to even more to Israel. I say, oh my gosh, if we, sometimes we, we had uh, 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 doubts about, is it really the country where I want to live sometimes, you know, because you have to, to get uh, adapted to the country, although you loved it, you have to get adapted to the language, which we didn't speak at all. I didn't speak Hebrew at all. So it takes a while, but when we had, the, after the war of 67, our love for Israel, for Israel grew so much, and we felt really this is our country, and we loved it. 
very much. Being Sephardic Moroccan, many Moroccan Jews found some kind of discrimination in Israel. And personally, I didn't encounter uh, almost uh, never, maybe at the, uh, at the later stage when I worked for the Israeli industry, I aeronautics, I worked with many Ashkenaz. I can draw a little bit like the way they put kind of a little barrier. But because I'm very strong in my, and proud of my descendants, like being Moroccan Jew, it's for me, it's wonderful because we have this combination of the French education and the culture, the hospitality, the Moroccan side. So this Oriental side with the French side, I think it just gave a beautiful combination of both, of having the French culture together with the hospitality and the Oriental side. So I felt very well in, in you know of my uh, of my roots. Very always, always like in Morocco, like some like you know there are always jokes about the people that come to Israel. Every every wave of immigrants. So Moroccan had a big part of jokes and stuff. And after it was the Georgian coming from Gruzia, uh, uh, former USSR. They had also their part, but the Moroccan was the the funny the funny one. So many times they would make jokes and say, ah, you are from uh, South Mor some South France, that's why we speak French. I say, no, 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 I'm not from South, I'm from Morocco. And Morocco is a beautiful country and I'm a proud Moroccan. Uh, you know, at that time, the, the, the girls didn't do the bat mitzvah. It was the, the, the men, the boys. So uh, the boys, uh, really most of them, uh, this is part of, I wouldn't say the Zionists, but being Jewish. And being Jewish uh, in Morocco, I think if I can add a word, it's, it was a lot, a lot, a lot of tradition. Tradition, tradition. <laughs> And it, everything was based on tradition. That's if, an Ashkenazi movie. I, I know, but I mean, I love it. I love the tradition, tradition, because Moroccan is all tradition. And the most of the uh, Moroccan Jews, I would say they're not orthodox, they're more conservative, but they are orthodox in their ways, but it's really less uh, 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 restricted or, 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 than, than Ashkenaz. I saw the, the form of Judaism in, in Israel more than... So in, in, uh, in Morocco, it's more the tra traditionalist, I would say. And boys, as to answer your question, boys had the bar mitzvah, so they had to learn Hebrew. It was like mandatory. And from, uh, but girls also went, uh, went to learn Hebrew, some of them, not all of them, but because there was no bat mitzvah, but it was not mandatory. But some went kind of the, the Jewish school, but there were programs. Boys went to Talmud Torah every single day after school. I went to French schools, which I'm very, I'm very proud and very happy about that. So I was not uh, involved in Talmud Torah at all, but we had a very Jewish, good Jewish family uh, as traditions, but I didn't, I didn't learn Hebrew at all. Um, I uh, spoke Hebrew only after a few months after I uh, arrived to, to Israel. So I did, when I came to Israel, I spoke in English because I, I, I took this in high school and I was very good at it. And when I spoke English, she said, where are you from? I said, Morocco. What, in Morocco we speak English? I said, excuse me. Well, I, I learned in high school, I learned Spanish and English as a second language. So uh, I spoke Hebrew, I learned Hebrew in Israel, not in Morocco, in my case. Well, can I make a joke? If I spoke Yiddish, maybe I would say it's the language of the exile. <laughs> but when we speak French, la langue de l'amour, you keep on speaking French because it's a beautiful language. And yes, I maintained uh, the French at home. When my uh, kids were born, we spoke strictly French because I thought Hebrew, I am a good Israeli, I am a Jew, good Jewish Sephardic who lives in Israel. So Hebrew, they will learn for sure at school and always the, the language of the outdoor, of the outside of the, 
of school will, will take over anyway. So I better speak in French to my kids, so they will have a second language. Also, we have a lot of family that lives in Europe, especially in France, from both sides, my husband's and mine. So we wanted, um, from our side, to have a way of communication with our family and to have a second language for my kids. So I maintained and, and we spoke strictly French till they, they were exposed, exposed to Hebrew only when they went to school. So I, I think today they are happy about that, of having another language. I mean, they can all of them speak uh, uh, quite good uh, the French language. Well, I think uh, Tonya and my mom uh, invented the cleaning nest. My mom was also ob obsessed with cleaning nests. And uh, unfortunately, she uh, engraved in uh, that in me. <laughs> and uh, thank God I'm a little bit less obsessed, which is good because it's a never ending. And uh, I, I can't find a reason, but it's so, I think it's, it gives to the this obsessed people of cleanliness, which I, I see in my, I, I saw my, my, I lived that in my house. Uh, it's, it gives them such a satisfaction to clean and clean and re-clean. And, and, and when it's done, like, wow, what, what, a, what a result. And too bad because many times it was at the account of having social life. Uh, I can give you an example of my mom, especially in Passover. Like it was crazy when I think about that, about having even the clothes kosher. We have to look at the pockets if there is not a crumb left. So all the pockets we were supposed to empty, and all the drawers, like, well, what can we find in drawers that would be, you know? Everything has to be and opened and cleaned. I remember we washed all the clothes of the, of the, of the dolls. I had to wash them and clean the dolls with uh, some detergent. Uh, and my mom, the, 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 the worst was when my mom, like I think uh, uh, Tonya from your book, she, she had uh, this pasta machine that she used, of course, to make a, a Moroccan galette, delicious. And, and she used to pass them, it's a dough for, with, uh, you know, with uh, eggs and, uh, and flour, etc. So she had to make them very thin, so it, she has to go through the pasta machine. And for Passover, even she, she didn't use it, it has to be, no, 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 it has to be very clean. So she opened all the pieces, like, like a puzzle. She opened small pieces, everything, and she opened, I said, how can you put this back? She said, don't worry, I can. She opened, cleaned, let them dry in the sun, and then she put back the machine and it worked. This is like, it reminds me of my mom when she said about Tanya. So it's, a, it's, a, I think it gives them just satisfaction, this cleaning neck, this is ob obsession. And, uh, and as I said, unfortunately, I irritated of some, I'm still obsessed in many ways, but I work on myself. Very rigid. Mourning in a Moroccan Jews, at that time, thank God, it's, it's a little bit softer now, it, I would say it was almost frightening because it has to be done that way and that's it. It has to be, we have to be sad, we have to cry. We were all black like the Greek people. Uh, this, uh, we took this uh, um, uh, custom to wear all black and to cover the head with a scarf that was black. And we have some rituals to uh, almost to, to, to um, hit yourself. Uh, look kind of around like a, like a dance. This is an old uh, costume, but they did it. I, di I saw that at my, gran my grandma's funerals. They hid themselves and they, they cried uh, and speak about all the, the well-being the, of the person that died, all the good things she had, all, all the characteristics. And, uh, and this was terrible. But when they went to Israel, Moroccan gets softer. They did the mourning and, the, and all the rituals, but not with the singing. And I remember when they were Shiva, we said Shiva 
I love, I love, I like the Shiva in this way that uh, psychologically it's so good because you sit, people come to see you be, uh, during the whole seven days and we speak of course and we, we uh, combine, people come to tell you jokes which is wonderful. So we joke and cry, jo make jokes and this is the healing process. This is a wonderful healing process. The people that sit with you, talk about the dead, you know, and we always evoke about you know the souvenirs and the remembrance that we reminisce about the person that died, but on the other hand also we speak about news, about uh, life, and jokes, and it makes you the time. So as I said, it's, it was a wonderful healing process, the Shiva. And first of all, as you know. I love all my food very hot, especially the coffee. If it's one degree less than boiling, and if it doesn't burn my tongue, it's not coffee. It has to be burning. It's true, I get that also from my strong mom. We touch everything very hot. I go to the oven, sometimes I forget that it's not 250 or 300, that it's 500. And they go, so oh, let's take it without. <laughs> With the dish towel, and I try, ah, but I, I can, yes, I can handle very hot, very hot uh, things.